Um, I'm actually going to let Nia explain this one because she, <laughs> I think you had a lot to do <laughs> brains behind that one. Um, Just handball that one over there. <laughs> Sorry, but I can't see what I can't blame it. It was a very emergent process of looking. Yeah, definitely. Um, it makes just so much sense. I think when I saw the famous TED talk from uh, Sir Ken Robinson, is that it? Sir Ken Robinson, um, who unfortunately passed away this year. I only just found that out today when I went to look at uh, because I wanted to reference um, him as someone who I was really inspired by his way of thinking and unpacking, I guess, yeah, how things have evolved to be the way they are. It's... Um, it's just a broken model, you know. I suppose one of the reasons it's so on my mind and heart, I guess, is because my dad was a primary school principal, so you know he was all about you know education um, in the traditional school system. But you know he was a very progressive um, teacher and principal, and brought a lot to those schools, I believe, you know. But uh, I kind of felt that expectation, or you know, it was, it was probably more me than than them in reality, but. I kind of had two older sisters who were really good at school and they loved academia and they enjoyed doing their assignments and I pretty much hated school and just was always just getting up to mischief and not really, um, you, you know, applying myself. My report cards were always, yeah, Brad could do a lot better if he just applied himself, you know. And, it's, and I feel, and, I've, and through my journey now as I've gone through adulthood, um, unfortunately, I've had a similar-ish experience with some different organisations that I've worked at where sometimes I think that the people um, who I was reporting to just didn't understand me and, you know, I wasn't kind of like, you know, just someone who was easy to pop into a box and so it was difficult for them to manage me, whereas I had a couple of other people who I think embraced who I am as a person and really, I guess, got behind me and that it just made a world of difference. Like I think certain people need that kind of, I guess, a little bit of encouragement. Um, I, so, I, I certainly did. So um, how many, like, what, what, what is the system for how you guys decide who gets to come to the school? Because I guess you can only have so many people come through. Um, how does that sort of get determined? Um, I'd say it's it's pretty cruisy. Um, I don't think we've ever said no to anybody mm. at this point. Um, typically, we look for students who have not completed their say. So that's the South Australian certification um, that they finish when they typically finish year 12. Um, but we have young people who have absolutely completed that, but they are looking for their next stepping stone. Um, so we've had them enrol in the team as well. Um, it's, yeah, we don't like to turn people away. If this is what they believe is right for them, um, they fit the age bracket um, and they're ready, you know, they've, they're self-selecting to be here, then that's really how we decide mm. or they decide rather. Yeah. <laughs> so, so far we haven't had the problem where more people have applied than places. So Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, I, I saw that... I guess within some of the key areas that you guys focus on, um, and I think this was maybe in your enterprise area, the soft skills and people skills and emotional intelligence and things like that came into um, the picture. So, yeah, I'd love to hear a bit about, uh, I guess, what you do um, to try and help equip these guys in that area. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the HHH model. That stands for Headwear, Hard, Artwear. Um, I'm actually going to let Nia explain this one because she, <laughs> I think you had a lot to do <laughs> brains behind that one. Um, Just handball that one over there. <laughs> sorry, but I can't, I can't blame it. It was a very emergent process of looking at what a lot of people are doing, you know, in the world of education and um yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of schools are focusing on what we call enterprise skills. Um, 
you know, which which are creativity, problem solving, communication, you know, different types of literacy, you know, lot, lots of people are focusing on that on them as enterprise skills. Personally, I argue they are just more kind of power skills that help you be a human, you know, you can apply them to enterprise or you can apply them to life. Um, so we actually mm. call rather than calling them enterprise skills, we call them hardware. You know, like that's the, the the practical things that you can apply to being in this world. Um, mm. We have headwear. Um, this is more the mindset um, type stuff. Um, again, I can't really take credit for this. We we have an amazing well-being team here. Um, they're influenced by um, positive psychology. Um, and, you know, it, uh, through working with them, they developed some of uh, d different mindsets that were beneficial. So we explore them through... Um, you know the the different beneficial mindsets through the the headwear um and then you know the the one that was um you know no, really important to me and like not just me a lot lots of people but i guess um i feel is missing from a lot of curriculums is the heartware um that you know the name was actually inspired i learned about this through the singaporean education system and you know it's your heartware like you know um it's what affects everything. It's it's your identities, you know, personal and social. It's your experiences. It's your connections. Um, it's your values and your passions and your sense of purpose. Um, mm. And I, I really missing from you know a lot a lot of curriculums. And I think it's also really important to note that we have the HHH framework, but it, it's not about those things, you know, as individual say growth areas. It's it's how they're interconnected. Um, you know, mm. and um, and and also how you perceive them. Like grit is one of the the head the head we have. Um, you know, I you know, there's a lot of criticism over like you know like drumming grit into young people because a lot of the issues that students face are actually like structural issues and inequalities. Um, so it's you know it's not okay to just tell people you just need to develop grit and get on with it. You know, <laughs> it's it's how they you know that that grit interconnects with and awareness of self and awareness of the systems we're part of and how they they all kind of interconnected so it's not just like we develop grit or we develop creativity it's you know it's how we harness what or how they already exist in our students um and you know support them to see how they can apply them in different areas of their life i, I hope that made sense yeah 100 <laughs> percent. I, I guess it's not so much about the individual components it's about how they're interconnected and also not assuming that our students are coming without them like the very deficit model of you know mainstream education often that our students actually have them um it's about harnessing them and supporting them to to, to use them in other ways yeah yeah no like that's beautiful <laughs> what was that sorry I feel like I just went off on one, so apologies if that makes no oh, sense. Oh no, I love that. Don't. There's no such thing as that here. I was actually I was running a show um, up until recently called Tangent Tuesday, purely because I actually like more detail than less, and I prefer if people kind of go off. Sometimes the best information really is found in that area because someone, you know, their brain is taking them off into an area that they're passionate about and they're talking about it so no no such no problem here with that it's uh that's to be um encouraged so let's talk about before we get these guys on shortly um so let's talk about project-based learning so what's i guess the theory behind that do you want to take that one? Don't want to take it. Uh, I would just like to preface this with, I am not an educator by trade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's in the simplest form, you know, it's it's learning by doing. Um, and um, I, I guess we don't just do project-based learning, but also project design. So supporting our students to design their own project. So, you know, them setting intentions and about what they would like to achieve um, and then working um, towards that in a kind of like, you know, with time bound goals. Um, so it's, yeah, it's experiential, it's hands on, you know, it's flexible, it's emergent. Um, yeah, it's not, it, it's, you know, it's not the traditional someone standing up and teaching you about something. 
Um, it's enabling you to bring your existing knowledge to, you know, research new things and then apply that. So our framework for projects probably would have been better to start with this is dream, do, discover. Um, and we mm -hmm. actually represent that infinity symbol. It's, you know, it's not a linear process. Um, so, you know, we, everything starts with a dream, an idea of something that could be different, new, better. Um, and then you kind of discover a bit and you, you know, you look at what you already know, you look at what you need to know, you look at who's already doing things. Um, and then you do something about it. And throughout that, you're discovering more about yourself and the world and what you're doing. And then, you know, you, you can, might complete that project, but you're onto a new dream. So it's yeah. a, a picture, but it's, it's an infinity symbol with the kind of the dream and do and then the discover wraps around all of them because we're constantly in a process of discovery through kind of you know reflection and action reflection and action the you know the practice um yeah of doing. what i love about that is so typically in mainstream schooling teachers are taught by cold learning cycle so typically they're looking at like you have the experience you reflect on it, you make plans for a new experience and you have to go in this process. Whereas what I love about ours is the order isn't fixed in that way. The reason it's that infinity symbol, as Nia said, is because it's this constant process that doesn't end and you don't do it the same way every time. Um, and that's that's how we look at learning here, um, is it, it happens that way. It's, it's not linear. Um, so that's, yeah, really important to me mm. when we're looking at learning. Yeah. And I would really yeah. like to acknowledge you know, like the, you, you know, the the study that kind of like informed the or is informing because it's still being developed. You know, these are these are not new innovative ways of doing things. This, you know, is informed by a lot of critical education philosophy, a lot of, um, you know, traditional knowledge systems, and you know, it, in, indigenous. Um, nations all over the world have been you know using experience-based learning you know for time memorial and you know if we can post something later i would love to share a great article that someone mm. you know shared um so yeah i just want to preface that like none of this that we're doing is actually groundbreaking new stuff it's actually like like stuff that has existed for a very long time um and and critical educators and transformational educators and indigenous you know communities of I've known for a very long time, but it's we're just packaging it in. It, you know, we're doing it in a different way here right now. Yeah. But for me, it's important to.